Hi, I'm Zadora, and I believe happiness can change the world. First of all, I'm from Rio de Janeiro, the happiest city on earth. And I'm not the only one saying that. There are many unbiased studies that agree with me. In Rio, we are always celebrating. And it's very hard for you to feel sad when you're surrounded by so much natural beauty. And the beach is always warm. But in 2009, I moved to New York City to pursue my master's in design and technology. I think it's safe to say that those cities are a little bit different. What I didn't notice back then was how much those differences were going to affect me. First of all, I'm one of those people that like to greet others on the elevator. I like small talks. So every time I gave a good morning, though, I was likely left with a blank face. So I stopped doing that. And on the subways, every time I tried to make eye contact, just made me feel really creepy. So I stopped that too. And when I tried to hug my friend and she told me, please don't hug me, I'm not a very touchy person, I just took it personal and I stopped hugging everyone else. One day, I was such in need of a hug that I thought the best thing to do is just to go to the closest wax museum so I could hug some celebrities. This is me of Albert Einstein. <laughs> but I also had an idea. What if I'm not the only one? What if maybe New York is full of these happy people that once came to the city, got a little bit burned, and started creating their own shells? So I decided that for my master's thesis, I wanted to research kindness. Because the truth is that I wanted people to be nicer to me. <laughs> so one thing that I learned is that there is a very high correlation between how happy you feel and how kind you are to others. The difference, though, is that me as a person, I can't really make you kinder, but I can make you feel happier. A simple way of doing that is just by breaking someone's routine with a positive interaction. Almost like when you get a free sample on the supermarket. So that's what I decided to do. For my master's thesis, I started creating a series of human interventions to bring joy to the routine of New Yorkers, so they could feel happier and be kinder. I spent a full year doing that. Uh, and how I always approached it was by asking people what bothered them on their daily routine. And every time I got a trend, I tried to find a way to rearrange it to bring more joy instead of pain. For example, lots of people complain about the solicitors on the street. It's very common for you to see people asking for money on the streets. So what I did was to go to the street and also ask for people's help. But I was not asking for their money. I wanted them to take some chocolate from me because I was on a diet and I needed to lose weight. Before I did that, people told me nobody would take food from strangers in New York City, especially if it's on a box with saying, I need your help. And I'm very happy to prove them wrong. It's also very common to hear people complaining about lack of deep connections. New York is full of people, but has very few meaningful interactions. So I created a safe platform where strangers could share words of support and positive thoughts with other strangers. The only way they could take some of these messages was by giving another one in return. So I created a kind chain. Also, it's very common to hear people complaining about lack of time, especially to do exercise. So I decided to make it easy for them. I talked to the guys in the electronics store, I set up my Wii, and I start inviting people to dance with me without getting them out of their way. Only one song, three minutes, but it really affects their mood. But maybe my favorite one of all times was during Valentine's Day, and people start complaining, I'm single, I don't have a date, the whole city is decorated for Valentine, and I have low self-esteem. Well, I didn't go on a date with everyone, if that's what you're thinking, <laughs> but I can try to make them feel better. I created a free compliments booth, and I would invite all these strangers to come to me so I could try to make something good for them, try to say something nice and make them feel better about themselves. One very interesting thing happened that day, though. I noticed that I was the one getting the most compliments of all. So that made me realize another important thing. It's not that people are desensitized to kindness. You just have to build the right environment for them to be able to trust in you. And once they do, they usually reply with more kindness. And happier people are not only nicer to others. There are other studies that, that show that 
when you're happier, you also are more creative. Probably because you feel less stressed, you can think more outside, more outside of the box and also be more resilient. And as a result, you're more productive. So if I were a recruiter, I would hire on happiness level. Also, contrary to what most people believe, happiness is not only something that happened to us. Everybody can exercise happiness. It's more about what you think when you go to bed, when you wake up, or even your daily actions than your current circumstances. Best of all, happiness is contagious. In fact, it only takes you two minutes to affect someone's mood, for better or for worse. So hopefully you're all feeling a little bit better by now. My personal mantra is that only boring people get bored. Just because you're doing boring stuff it doesn't mean you need to be boring about it. Yes, we all have to do ordinary things like fill up a papers form, but with a little bit of imagination, we can always tweak the situation and have more fun. On my first business trip, I got in this hotel room. I had nothing to do until my next meeting in the morning, and I don't watch much TV. But there was a bed, so I thought, why not? I'll just jump in this bed until I can take a good picture out of it. And I had so much fun doing it that I've been doing it since then. Every time I see a new bed, I get a new jump, and I take a picture. I have 46 pictures now. But if this sounds a little bit extreme, there are still things we all can do on a daily basis that are proof to increase your happiness. First of all, be grateful. For everything we don't have, there is so much we do have, and we usually take it for granted. Try to take five minutes of your day and think of all the good things that happened to you the day before. They don't need to be big, like a text message, or you spoke to a friend, or you ate something really delicious. And you start focusing on that and not on the things you can't control. Also, smile, mostly when you don't want to. It turns out our brain's not very smart. It doesn't know the difference between faking or feeling it. So as long as you force yourself to smile, you start feeling better. Trust me, I've tried. One day I was driving, and then I start crying. And then I start smiling, and then I cry, I smile, I cry, I smile, and then eventually I felt better. <laughs> Took a while. <laughs> um, it sounds cheesy because it is, but you should really love who you are. As human beings, we are capable of doing so much and we usually take it for granted. I believe everybody should have a top 10 list of what they love about themselves. And then every time you're feeling a little bit down, you can take a look at it and think, I'm pretty awesome. <laughs> Finally, keep learning. Our brain needs to be challenged. In fact, it feels rewarded when it does. Take as many hobbies as you can. Doesn't mean you need to be good about it, but just the fact that you're learning will make you feel rewarded and happier and live longer and healthier. Once you start doing all those things, you learn something magical happens. You realize that happiness is in you. And the more you share it with the world, the more kindness you get in return. So I would like to encourage everyone to be a little bit more positive today, try to smile a little bit more, and if you ever need a hug, I'm right here. Thank you very much.